radio program broadcasting live from Hutchinson, Kansas. Call Jiggy right now. 267-22 Jiggy. What's going on with that shirt? Presenting Jiggy Jaguar. I don't know what is going on with my shirt, but we are going to go to our first guest. He is going to be our only guest of this hour. Uh, we have got a great guest we are going to go to here in just a few seconds here on our big program. The fantastic, fantastic Howie Gordon is back with us. Hey. It's like a Christmas miracle. We have got uh, Howie joining us today here on our big program. Hey. How are you, sir? Tra la 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 <laughs> You know... This this could be another one of these fun ones today, and uh, we have got one Howie. We can only hope. We can only hope. <laughs> yes. I'm sitting here trembling with the process of the tech. I'm not much of a techie, and when I have to do these things, I get a little fatumo. You know the word. Hey, fatumo? hey, you're the good. It is for fucked up. <laughs> you're good. You uh, you you you're 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 fantastic as always. Okay. So, Howie, what have you been up to lately, sir? Well, physical therapy comes to the top of my list. Um, okay, have... <laughs> what, what's, what, what's been going on there? I have adhesive capsulitis of the right shoulder. What in the world is that? Well, that means that um, <laughs> uh, several months ago, I had spinal stenosis. You know what that is? A uh, little bit, yes. Spinal stenosis is a narrowing of uh, things grabbing your spinal column, and it makes for tremendous back pain. So I had to stretch myself daily, and I did that by hanging from a chinning bar. Well, <laughs> by doing that, wow. I managed to tear. You tore your rotator cuff, didn't you? <laughs> Well, I, I have a partial tear. Oh, because okay. A full tear would have meant surgery. A partial tear means physical therapy. Yes. I have a partially torn rotator cuff, and I have scads of arthritis in my right shoulder. So the, the net result was I couldn't move my right arm without really nasty pain. Yes. And you have to go see a neurologist. Now, That'll take a month out of your life waiting to get in to see the neurologist because <laughs> they're very busy doctors and yes. neurology ing around. Neurology in, around. That is awesome. <laughs> and I got physical therapy and it's actually working. Shh, don't tell anybody. It works. Well, it works. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. I have a, a little bit of experience with, uh, w with this. I have on a couple of occasions. Uh, torn a rotator cuff and oh. done, you know, just, just done dumb shit in the gym. And <laughs> I managed, I, I managed, understand. I uh, understand. I did a lot of that myself. I, I managed to find a, a, um, a video on YouTube where they, they, they have this, this personal trainer guy and he basically gave four exercises and they're just simple simple things you can do them with dumbbells or you can do them without dumbbells and doing that you know two or three times a week for oh about a month i managed to fix the thing I and every once in a while when i have issues like there was one time uh, i think it was last summer i uh took a, a bag of garbage out and instead of walking it to the dumpster i just threw it to the dumpster well, and I tore my rotator cuff again, so I had to go. <laughs> had to go. Had to go do the the little rehab stuff again. And you couldn't pitch in the World Series. No, nor no. would I be invited to be in the World Series. <laughs> but uh, so, Howie, uh, yeah. you are uh, fantastic. If, if you're listening to us. Live as live can get on JiggyJaguar.com or any number of our uh, radio affiliates. Thank you. Uh, Howie Gordon joins us today here on a big broadcast. And if you're uh, watching us on the website, uh, JiggyJaguar.com or Twitch or Odyssey or any of these places, uh, thank you. If, if, if you're seeing us uh, later on on BitChute or ooh, Facebook or YouTube or uh Rumble or any of the number of places. Thank you. Wow. But wow. one of the things um, that if you're watching our video, you're seeing Howie in all of his glory, and you're seeing this. 
this, well, I have my clothes on. You have this background, <laughs> which is amazing. What in the world is all that crap that is behind you? <laughs> <laughs> my God! I, uh, there, there are about 3,000 things hanging from the ceiling. In what in the world is all that? Chotchkeys is the word. Chotchkeys um, is the yeah. word. Yard sale finds. I have been an ardent yard sailor since I came to California in 1971. Um, and uh, I liked uh, I liked things. <laughs> I'll tell you, some of the and stuff you got hanging up up Everybody there. Look, this is my desk. Now, actually, behind all of these things here. Betty Boop, there, that's pretty there, badass. There are diaries. You know, the other thing I, I should make clear with you i'm not sure of is the limitations of language on your oh you can say whatever the hell you want because the stuff that the stuff that's offensive will either edit it out later or will dump Uh, out and the stations won't even hear it it'll be like you took a breath (laughs) um there's i also i don't know if you can delineate you can see these things clearly i'm gonna i see i see betty boop i see right above betty boop she's pointing to a ken doll Okay. Ken. Yes. And Ken, Ken has an uh, erection that he's fondling. Yes, I uh, see well, that. And the then here. next to him well, is Wonder Woman. Yes. One of the things I've done is I take dolls and I put, I give them genitalia. I I put uh, nipples <laughs> on Barbie dolls, I and I put penises genitalia. on Ken dolls. Um, and uh, I've done this all over the bedroom. Uh, our house is in the downstairs is G rated because my kids, I had kids. <laughs> and the upstairs, my bedroom is mine. So I can do whatever I like in here. Um, and there's a lot of dolls with genitalia having relationships uh, hanging from the ceiling and lots of other places. Um, this, is, that a, a, is that a globe there? I, I, I see so, something. Something like a globe on your on on uh, in your uh, collection there because you got you got Betty Boop up there. Oh, these, we got somebody with a guitar. Oh, those light bulbs you're talking about? Yes. Yes, they're decorative light bulbs. They're wonderful. Ace Hardware, thirteen bucks <laughs> a piece, which is kind of pricey, but um, yes, I love them. And there's there's a whole row of eight of them. Uh, they're in a line, so you only sing the one the line from the side. But they're wonderful, and uh, I, I like them. So I like them. <laughs> I love it. I, I love your setup there. So, so, yeah. so, Howie, uh, yeah. the last time we had you on, uh, God, it was a, a, about a year ago, I would say. So, 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 so wow. something like that. Um, wow. You have all sorts of things going on. Um, where is the best spot for us to direct people to? find everything about you well um my email address would be the best (laughs) place because i can tell you whatever you want to know um but let's just start with i have a new release on the market that's awesome putting on my me putting on my grown-up pants here and doing promotion uh this is a audio performance not an audio book (laughs) this is me performing my book um, and it's way too intense to call it just a That narration. is fantastic. So I'm selling that, and that is to, you go to uh, Howie Gordon, H-O-W-I-E-G-O-R-D-O-N dot Bandcamp, one word, Bandcamp. Oh, no, you're on Bandcamp. That is fantastic. Com. Yeah, because Audible wouldn't fucking deal with me, um, which is a <laughs> shame. You know, I had a rep, I mean, there's a woman named Susie Bright. I don't know if you know Susie. Susie is a brilliant feminist writer, been involved. She first interviewed John Leslie and me 40 years ago on a movie set. Um, talked dirty to me, in fact. And uh, she's become uh, quite a, a sociologist, a a professor at uh, Santa Cruz and well known in feminist circles. Anyway, she's got a job working with audiobooks and sent me up, uh, set me up to interview for having them promote my book. And I call the guy and I send him a sample. He wants a sample. And uh, okay, so I send him a sample. He sent, he answers me back saying, Your voice stinks. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, get a professional narrator. Okay, and the quality of the recording is uh, no good. So uh, you're over for two, and uh, you're over for two. And so I redo it. 
Um, I get go to a fancier studio. I invest in the quality sound, and I'm done, I'm done, and uh, I do another performance. He gets back to me. My voice still stinks. He doesn't like my voice, and he um, doesn't want to do business with me. And what I've discovered over a lifetime in and around the sex industry is a lot of times when you enter the straight world, um, sometimes they just tell you, ooh, don't touch anything, and there's the door. Yes. Okay. That's that's honest. I don't, like don't, that. don't just get um, out. We're going to have a security escort you out. Yeah. But a lot of times, <laughs> when you're, especially if you're sending your book around or your whatever around, you get criticized, and the criticism's got nothing to do with anything other yes. than they don't want to tell you that you're a porn slob and you don't shouldn't exist. Yes. Um, but they start they confuse you. They're going to give you all this. Well, your double dabble needs needs noiching, and your flunging needs blinging, and <laughs> you just so you're getting. You're shown the door, but you're you're shown it in a dishonest way. And I had the feeling that's what this guy was doing. He just didn't want a book about just didn't that. just didn't want to deal with you. Yeah. So he gave me the round, blah, 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 blah. and I ended up uh, with Bandcamp, which is a music industry phenomenon that my tech person turned me on to, and that's been fine. So to get the book, back to that, I'm, I'm good at going in circles. Right? You ask me one question, and I can do 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> It's uh, Bandcamp dot, or no, HowieGordon.Bandcamp.com, C-O-M. You go there, and there'll be a thing that said, buy digital, buy, purchase digital order. That's what you hit. And you get uh, all of hindsight recorded by me, which has been a wonderful experience. You know, it, it's like I get to play a part. I've been rehearsing my entire life to play. So... <laughs> when this guy said, get a professional narrator, who the fuck is going to play me better than me? Okay? There Kiss you go. That's the thing. Yeah, my ass, pal. And I did a bang-up job. And, uh, you know, there's parts of the book the, that um, I'm crying while I'm reading. And, I mean, emotions <laughs> just happen. And, and I let it happen, you know, because that was real. God, there's some great stuff in there. Uh, so it's exciting that I, to have done that book. And I... I it doesn't do me any good if I don't learn how to sell things, which I'm really bad at. But that too. You know, my friend said to me, "What the fuck? Did you may write the greatest book in the world. If nobody reads it, what good are you?" Um, yes. So I've got to, you know, grow up a little bit there and learn how to promote these things and, and publicize. And thank you for giving me the voice and the place to do that. Oh, I love it. I, I, I you, you, you are amazing. I. Uh, well, thank you. I, I, I appreciate I, your appreciation. I, I, I just think you're fantastic. We have got uh, a great guest with us today. Howie Gordon joins us here on our big broadcast, and you can join us each and every week over there at com. You can also find us on the Twitter machine at Jiggy Jaguar, and you can also uh, download our videos, watch our videos. We have got audio, video. Uh, as my good, close, personal, longtime friend, the great Frank Catolo says, the web is lousy with Jiggy Jaguar. <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> and so, so Howie, uh, what led you to, you know, what, 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 what was the process of doing this audio book? Because I, I, I'm fascinated by, by, by the, by the fact that you decided to do an audio book and put this whole thing together uh, take me through this whole process. Well, the proof is in the pudding. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Chapter, chapter one. We were headed across Kansas in my yellow Rambler convertible. The top was down. Headed across ways. Kansas? The top was down in more ways than one. The year was 1971. I was a young man of 23. It was summer. It was hot. <laughs> I had my shirt off. I glanced over at my new lover, Melody. She was older than me, and she was taking off her shirt, too. There was no undershirt, no bikini top, not even a bra. Her breasts were bouncing in the breeze. We were not on the back roads of Kansas. We were on Interstate 70. Truckers going by pulled wildly on their horns and yahooed out the windows. I had a shopping bag filled with marijuana in the back seat. Melody, what are you doing? I asked. Well, it's hot, came the reply. 
I figured I'd take my shirt off too. Melody, are you crazy? Ooh, it was the wrong question at the wrong time. In her eyes, I changed from being this fabulously precocious, young, and sensitive man into LBJ napalming babies. I received my first real lecture. <laughs> yes. I, I received my first real lecture on women's liberation, and I received it all the way from the middle of Kansas through Colorado, Wyoming, Utah, and Nevada, right on up to the doorsteps of a commune in Berkeley, California. I had left my girlfriend of five years and quit a big-paying job in Washington, D.C. to be with this woman. I had been thrown out of my parents' house after sleeping with her there. And now I was about to move into her space to live with her and her 12-year-old daughter in this Berkeley commune. Of course, she's got a 12-year-old daughter. So what was the attraction to this woman? Marty, my agent, asked me. She sounds like a loon to me. Well, she was very beautiful. She could also be very magical, I told him. And when it came to sex, she had less shame and guilt than any other woman I ever met. If there was an original sin, it wasn't hers. She was unabashedly noisy when we made love, and that was very exciting. <laughs> she, was also, she was also the first woman who ever asked me to fuck her in the ass. And that was incredible. She loved that. Whoa, 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 whoa. Marty, the agent, said, putting up both hands. You're not planning on putting that in the book, are you? Sure. Why not? Sure, why not? Why not? It's way too much information. We don't need to know that about you. It's not important. Not important? Are you crazy? I left my girlfriend, quit my job, and moved 3,000 miles across the whole country just to fuck this woman in the ass, and you're trying to tell me it's not important? She was spectacular. This isn't real, is it, Marty asked. You're just teasing me. Marty said he believed in me. If you were a horse, I'd bet on you, he used to say, but you're too raw. You need editing, refinement, and you've got to stop writing about this shit. Okay, Marty, relax. It's not real. It's only fiction. It's all just fiction. Okay? Good, he said. Then we still have a chance, because like I told you before, a guy like you is only believable in fiction. <laughs> and that starts me off here, which goes to a next chapter that says... You still bragging about your sex life? It was God. He and I talk from time to time. Not too often, mind you, but every now and then we talk. Well, I guess so, I answered him, if that's what you think I'm doing. I thought by now you'd be done overcompensating for having a small dick. What could I say? I was speechless. And even though I let you be a porn star, God said, your sex life wasn't all that great, you know. Midgets actually get a lot more pussy than you ever did. They don't call them midgets anymore, I told them. They're called little people. <laughs> Blow me, God said. <laughs> what do you mean my sex life wasn't so great? I asked him. It ain't over yet, is it? I mean, is there something you're not telling me? No, but you're over 60 years old. I think it's a fair assumption to suggest that you're on the downhill side of things. Moses lived to be, what, 120, I said? Yeah, but I knew Moses, and you're not him. Amazing. Samples. Amazing. Samples. It is the fantastic, fantastic Howie Gordon. He joins us today here on the old Skip Skype. Yes, the Skyper Rooney. And uh, Howie is with us. He is amazing. Uh, you know, have you ever thought about going to any of these. Uh, exoticas or these abns or any of these conventions <laughs> i think you would yes. be a fucking hit at these yes. things i i um i went to avn back when they gave me awards so that was that was uh, every year that was you know, that <laughs> was when fun they, gave me awards. Except when you, they, they used to have the avn awards in a, like an airplane hangar where you could comfortably seat 500 people for dinner and you didn't, you couldn't see the stage. It was too far away. You needed binoculars. So they had big screen TVs all through the hangar so you could watch the show on television. Um, I, and uh, what, I'd still go to, if I get invited back for an emeritus, emeritus kind of award, I go to those kind of things. But basically, um, I've gotten all the awards they have to give. So uh, I'm, I'm not going. And 
they have the exoticas, which is different, that play from city to city. And one time I was invited by a, a starlet who was had who was selling her wares there. She said, come and sit with me and, you know, you can sell whatever you want. So I had a picture I had taken <laughs> that I thought was brilliant. I, I really did. Yeah, I took my I took a bowl of peanuts and I stuck my hard cock into the bowl of peanuts and I took a picture of it. <laughs> and the caption is, you're fucking nuts. <laughs> now, I thought this was going to sell like hotcakes. And I had 100 posters made. And I took it to the Exotica. Well, at first they were selling for twelve ninety five, and uh, then they were selling for ten ninety five, and then they were selling for eight ninety five, and by the end of the night, I sold one to a drunken college student for three ninety five, just so I'd have Bart Fair to get home from San Francisco. There you go. So. You know, you know, I, I don't have a – I'm not in touch with, with what the public wants to buy. But I thought that was a big deal. I thought it was going to be great. You're fucking nuts. That was great. I think if you were to uh, – and I don't know if he's going to Exotica in Chicago this year, but uh, what you should do is get linked up with Patrick Palmer and – do this at uh, at at one of his booths that he does because I think it would be phenomenal. He brings in all well, sorts I think of different. Patrick people. Palmer is one of the, the good guys of the world. Yes, really, I love Patrick. And, he's he's a hell yeah, of a me dude. Too. Me too. I I'm on the, I go on the show every Sunday. I sit in the <laughs> audience and watch the new kids. You know, I, I I haven't been up to date in the business since 1992. So. To see what they're doing in 2022, I'm just really out of I didn't, it's it's a foreign it's a new world, and I, I like listening to the young ones talk about all that stuff, and then I get on and tell some old people stories, which which keep them amused. <laughs> grandpa, <laughs> grandpa porn, grandma porn, grandpa porn. porn. That's right. Yeah, I fucked your grandmother. She was hot. Let me tell hey, you. Hey, fucked your grandmother, Ray. Let, let, let Landry Dice Clay for everybody. Uh, oh my God. Howie oh my Gordon God. joins us here on our broadcast, and Howie is amazing. And you can get more information, howiegordon.bandcamp.com. I am amazed that that is a real website. Go over, it howiegordon.bandcamp.com. It yeah. Well, you, the, the, reason, been... the reason why, 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 why that puts a smile on my face is that I have been interviewing uh musicians uh for uh, as as the late great brother ken would say since god was a baby and um yeah. i will have to say every time they bring up their band camp they're always like oh go get on you know <laughs> blah 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 dot band camp dot com oh. and so when you brought that up i'm like this is hilarious you have a band camp page I do. amazing Not only that I have a new rap song. <laughs> that I, you that have I a rap song. I, I, I can't figure out the tech to play it now and stay on the air. But um, I will send you uh, yes. the rap. Yes. It's called The Lioness and the Rabbit. The Lioness oh, yes. and the Rabbit. In you fact, send this to me. Uh, the Lioness and sir. the Rabbit is a story in hindsight. And if it comes to me quickly here, I'll, I'll give you a taste of it. I love it's it. It's about, I, I was hired. No, oh, this is a. I'll just do it off the cuff here. I was hired uh, by Seika at the top of the house. <laughs> Good old I met her at the uh, at Exotica in uh, Chicago right, in she, April. She is yeah. something else. Right, so this is 1983. She's the hottest thing there is. And uh, Seika, I'm Seika, at the top of my game, but I'm not in her league at all. <laughs> and um, we were – she went to – to Anthony Spinelli, who was the, one of the premier directors, if not the premier director of that era. Yeah. And she said to him, look, I've done a lot of movies. I know I'm great at sex, but I want to do a movie where I do a good job as an actor. And I heard that you're really good at getting performances out of untrained actors, and I would like to, to work with you. So he said, sure. Uh, and he sent his son to Chicago, where Seika was living, to look at her life and write a screenplay based on her life. And this he did. And at that point in time, um, the short version of this story is that John Leslie usually got the lead parts when we worked together with Sam, and I would have the supporting role. <clears throat> well, one time, John did something to piss Sam off, and his punishment was the next movie, I got the lead part, and he got the supporting role. And that was this movie. And this movie was huge. Um, it was called Sunny Days, 
and it, had a budget, it had a budget of six hundred thousand dollars. This is no exaggerating. No, no that had never been days. spent on a porn film. What happened it. was <clears throat> this woman who was brand new, she owned a video store right at the beginning of video stores, and she got a lot of money real quickly. And she wanted to be a producer. And I think she also wanted to have sex with Seika, but that's more than <laughs> yes. More than something I, I I can state factually. That was the rumor. So anyway, <clears throat> she goes to Seika and wants to fund this movie, and that's what got Sam involved, and that's what got me the lead part. Okay, so it comes time to shoot this movie, and I had a newborn baby. I hadn't had a, I hadn't done a movie in a year. I'd been changing diapers. My life was very different than what my earlier life had been when I was working regularly. And for this movie, the first day on the set, I've got to fuck Seika. Oh, okay. That's not a bad gig uh, if you can get it. Well, yeah, <laughs> if you can handle it. Uh, you know, I was, in the beginning of my career, terrible at the sex. Um, I actually like women, and I actually like to have a relationship with them, like say hello to me before we fuck would be nice. You couldn't always get that. And so it created a lot of problems, and there was no Viagra. There was no Cialis. There was no Levitra. It was trial by ordeal. It was quite a medieval event. Well, you could, you, could always, you could have always done the, uh, and, and I don't think this is a real thing, but uh, there was an episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm at one point where Larry David supposedly went and hung out with a porn star friend of his. And supposedly they said that if you take a finger uh, covered in Tabasco sauce and shove it up your ass, it'll, it'll, it'll keep your erection. <laughs> but I, 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 don't, I don't think that that's a real gimmick there, Howie. I, that's one cure I didn't try. <laughs> <laughs> I would have if I had heard about it. I was, there's nothing like 50 people standing around waiting for you to get a heart on. <laughs> there, that's there fantastic. No, there's no lonelier place on earth. That's right. That's right. Uh, so uh, anyway, I'm... It's the day, so it's time to go to work. It's the day of the session. Time to go to work. That's right. And on the way to, I live in Berkeley, and you've got to go across the Bay Bridge to get to San Francisco where the shoot is. And I'm practicing getting erections in the car. Um, <laughs> driving the how in the Bay world? Bridge. How in the world is this accomplished? Well, because I've got to take down. some notes. <laughs> and you're driving. Go ahead. Sir. And you have to be careful because when you're on the Bay Bridge, if a truck goes by, they can see right down into your. That's path. right. That's um, right. So I would cover myself up quickly when I saw a truck coming with my jacket. And then he would pass me up and I'd uncover and practice some more. Amazing. I wasn't trying to come, I was trying to just get hard and make myself hard. And that was what I was rehearsing. And one guy, I missed the truck one time and he goes, ah, ah, and he's honking his horn and just, I had to rehearse. I, I, you know, I, <laughs> I to, had to rehearse. All right. So I get to the set, and it's it's like August. It's five thousand degrees. It's a hot, miserable day, and uh, we're they're taking all day to get the set ready. And I start freaking out. I'm, I'm freaking out. I I'm feeling nervous. Out. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. I'm really nervous. And this is where the well, the concept came to me. The Seiko was a lioness. She was a lioness, and I was a, a fucking rabbit. <laughs> and that was going to be the sex thing, the lioness and the rabbit. The oh lioness and the rabbit. Oh, God. On the next, Phil Donahue. Go, go ahead. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> so we get on the set. Oh, before we get on the set, um, I know I need to calm down. I really need to calm down. I need to calm down. Okay. Okay. I take a half a valley. It's not going to loom large in my legend with Sam. It's, it's, <laughs> I think I have a volume. It's a method actor, but um, after the volume wow. kicks in, I realize, oh God, it was a mistake. It didn't. Oh me God, down. it was a it mistake. Hit, it hit me like a fucking baseball bat over the head. Now I'm dizzy. I'm hot, and I'm still scared. <laughs> and, and I'm on oh. Sally now. Oh no! Oh, I, I really volume. screwed this up. Okay, so now it's time to go into makeup. And I go into makeup, and I know the makeup lady, and I sit down in the chair, and I say to her, look, I don't feel so good. Um, I, I, you know, I, I don't, and she said, well, that doesn't sound like you. And I said, well, it, it's me now. <laughs> <laughs> it's she, she it's a, the new me she, now. She puts a cold compress on me, and um, 
Seika comes by, and I say, "Look, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not doing too good. I don't know if we're going to be able to do this scene." And she, she said, "Okay, well, let me know what I can do." And she walks away. Um, well, two minutes later, she went right to Spinelli and said, "Your boys, your boys having trouble." Um, and he comes over and he goes, "What's going on?" And I said, "Well, I'm, I'm, I'm I don't feel good. I don't, I'm feeling, I'm not feeling well." I said, "Well, look, let me know when you know, because if we don't shoot that scene, we got to do something else. So let me know as soon as you know." The next thing I'm on, I'm on the set. <laughs> Let me know as soon as you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I could, I, if I got, the, I could have said to him, "Look, I can't go on. I'm not going on." I, but I didn't. I just sort of drifted, and I end up on the set. And the next thing I know, Sake and I are kissing, and uh, I'm naked and she's naked, and we start kissing more, <laughs> and. We're kissing, <laughs> and I'm thinking we've been kissing for a long time. I better do something else. They're gonna, because they're running the cameras here, and it's money, and it's film, it's not video. Um, so, um, I, well, I'll do so. I'll reach, I crawl down her body, and I'll eat her pussy, and uh, uh, lick, 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 and I'm thinking, oh my god, I've been doing this for 20 minutes. I got to do something else now. I've my dick pussy for 20 hard. fucking my dick minutes. Is <laughs> so, um, but I reach up to touched my mouth and then I noticed oh my god I got sandpaper chin it's been like 12 hours since my last shave and not only am I kissing her pussy too much I'm probably damaging everything in there and she's too nice to say anything about it and so now I'm trying to cover up my stubble and look at her like this uh, and this goes on for a while and um, <laughs> this goes on for a while and then, I'm telling you, nobody's talking to me. It's all silent f shit while the cameras are running. And um, finally, she just slid down my body and took my dick in her mouth. Oh, God. I had a breath for the first time in like a half an hour. And, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> breath an hour. oh. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, so I, I get, I, my dick comes up, you know, and I, wait a minute, it might be an illusion. <laughs> it, if, if, can I get it from the time she sucks, to, sucks topping me, stops sucking me, can I get it in her before it goes soft again? And that's going to be like a, like a football play. Okay, get on the line on three. Ready? Hike, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I jump up, I stick it in her, and it gets in. I'm in. I'm in. Okay, now pump you, motherfucker. Pump for your life. Boom, boom, boom. Pump boom, for boom. your life. <laughs> so this is the lioness and the rabbit. And um, I end up coming. Um, and uh, so did she. I, uh, she. She really was having a good time. I didn't know any of this because I was all 12 of Santa's reindeer during this. and I, couldn't I didn't know you. any of this. That is amazing. I, I said to her afterward, look, we got to redo this tomorrow. I apologize profusely. I think I'm just not, you know, I, I haven't done this in a long time. And, you know, and she's going, I don't know what you're talking about. That was great. And they're all had the proof. Everybody's happy. They got all this footage. And okay, I, I, didn't, I wasn't there. I have no idea how that got. So that led to here we are. What is it? 40 years later, when I'm writing about this, I came up with a. My tech guy was saying we need some music to 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 promote this, and because uh, uh, he's out of the music business, so I wrote the um, the rap song, the lioness and the rabbit, and you'll get that when we're done today. I'll, I'll send oh, it to yes. you. Oh yes, oh yes. I think you, you'll be happy to play it on your show. It's a pretty good. The song. lioness <laughs> and the rabbit. So so yeah. uh, uh, w what happens after all this? Oh, that's the best part of the story. Uh, we finished the movie now. Because this, this is all rumor stuff. So don't, don't, I can't testify about this in court. But in the rumor mill, here's how this went down. This woman who had all this money came and no experience in the movie business came to Sega and said, "I want you to star in this movie." And Sega said, "No, I'm retired. I don't want to do any more movies." And the woman said, "I'll pay you whatever you want." Sega said, I "I'll want pay you whatever you want." She said, "Okay." <laughs> She didn't know any better. She didn't know what the salaries were. And Seika, I'm retired in a minute. <laughs> so that's when she decided, okay, this is, we got a live one here. And um, she got Sam. She went, he was the best director. And then she got me. And we, she surrounded herself with the best talent the industry had to make a movie about herself. And the irony here is the, they were going to call the movie, um, her character in the movie was going to be Seika. And 
I thought that was really stupid because here she's attempting to be to make a have a coming out party as an artist and she's going to play herself. That's dumb. She needed to be a character. <laughs> That's so, dumb. <laughs> um, when Seika smiles, the sun comes out, and I thought Sunny. Her name's Sunny, and I pitched that to Sam, and he bought it. So the movie was called Sunny Days. And Sunny Days. We make we make this movie. And the budget ended up being this Whopper number, six hundred thousand dollars. And everybody, I at my peak, I got a thousand dollars a day, which was except for John Holmes, that was the top male salary, yeah. standard. Janie Gillis, Harry Reams, thousand a day. John Leslie, that was what the going rate was in 1982-83. Um, John Holmes had his own deal because he was a private industry unto himself. The, um, he was a private industry unto himself. He was. Um, so, for this movie. I got 1200 a day. It was the highest salary I ever got. And I had like 12 days in it. It was the biggest payday of my career. And the irony, everybody else was paid like that as well. Everybody made more money than they ever made before. And on the one hand, this started off by taking advantage of a naive producer, which is a, almost an oxymoron to say. Um, there aren't too many naive producers uh, that get anywhere. Anyway, uh, it, it had the... The, the converse effect. It brought out the best in all of us. We were also happy to be being paid at this level. We wanted to stay at this level. We wanted to make this a massive hit. And we worked extra hard on making this a good movie. Okay. So we finished the movie. And they take all the footage and they go... It, it used to be they'd shoot up in San Francisco. This is shot in Chicago and San Francisco. And then they take it back to L.A. for post-production. Yeah. Um, and they took it back to L.A., and that's the first time that this producer got to see the rest of the industry and meet the other people in the production end of things. And she came to realize that she'd overpaid everybody for everything. And you can imagine how happy this made her. <laughs> oh, wow. So her revenge was taking the movie and putting it in the cans and taking it back to Chicago, and the parting words are... No one will ever see anything about this movie ever again. And no one has. Wow. So the movie never was released. And in my book, which you'll hear the story of when you buy yeah. the, the, or read, either way is okay with me. Um, it's called The Greatest X-Rated Movie Never Made. Wow. Sunny Days. Sunny Days. You know and I'm sure you're 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 probably not a professional wrestling fan. So oh, sure I am. I grew up in it. Well, there was a uh, when you you keep bringing up Sunny Days. I think of there is a promo that um, Shawn Michaels cut on Bret Hart. I believe in '97. There was a rumor at that time that there was this this woman by the name of Tammy Cinch who wrestled, or she didn't wrestle, but uh, her her character name was Sunny, and there was a rumor that Sunny had slept with Bret Hart, which was completely false. She was banging Shawn Michaels, but <laughs> at one point uh, on Monday Night Raw, live in front of the entire world. Uh, while they're cutting this promo, Sean looks at Brett and he goes, I think you've been having some sunny days. And so <laughs> every time <laughs> you kept bringing up sunny days, <laughs> yeah, I was thinking of Asian cock himself, Sean Michaels, <laughs> yeah. saying well, my, sunny my, days. My wrestling expertise is from the 1960s. 60s? Um, so okay, uh, g g g give me, Buddy give me, Nature Boy Rogers, Nature Boy Buddy, Buddy Rogers, baby, Johnny Valentine, Johnny Ant Valentine, Antonino Rocco, Antonino uh, Rocco, that's right, Killer Kowalski, Killer, Killer Kowalski. Kowalski, Sweet Daddy Siki, Bobo Brazil, Bobo Brazil, yes, the indeed, the fabulous Fargo brothers, yes, uh, they were Jackie Jack Fargo, and yeah, the Jackie Fargo strut. Pittsburgh was a big center of the revival of wrestling, which was big in the 40s. And Pittsburgh yes. in the early 60s became a revival with something called Studio Wrestling, where all these guys came yes. back to life again. Yes, Studio Wrestling. St yeah. Studio Wrestling it was was big, and um, 
There is a there is a guy by the name of Billy Corrigan who uh, has a band called the Smashing Pumpkins. He <laughs> bought he bought the National Wrestling Alliance and has tried to bring back studio wrestling on a few occasions. Yeah. So yeah, so yes, stu- studio wrestling. So uh, so okay. So what happens? Uh, af- after this Sika uh, business, did you ever work with Sika ever again or anything? Or, well, uh, I did, but I worked with her as a director. She um, wanted to do a film of her own, okay. where she produced the whole thing and starred in it, and she hired me to be the director, which was a huge step for me, uh, because in my generation, the uh, directors that we know of now were John Leslie and Paul Thomas uh, and Rob uh, Eric Edwards. But I was the first of all of us to direct. And it was this movie, long before uh, they got started in their careers, I got this movie and I directed It's called Careful, He May Be Watching. And I won Best Director. (laughs) Careful, He May Be Watching. I have a big trophy for Best Direction that year. And the the oddity about that movie is like, here I am, uh, Sega liked me and I liked her and she had a lot of respect for my movie making abilities and my writing abilities and she wanted me to be involved in this production Um, so okay great because AIDS had just come along and um, my wife had just told me that I just retired now I didn't want to hear about that because I spent 10 years going from absolutely nobody with a small dick to Richard fucking Pacheco who had a decent career um, and I didn't want to quit. <laughs> I was making a thousand dollars a day, picking the women I wanted to work with. I didn't quit. Um, well, <laughs> you could die here, asshole. That what my wife was saying. And finally, um, I mean, the, the date was November the tenth, nineteen eighty four. Like I don't have it burned into my brain. On that date, the San Francisco Chronicle had a front-page headline about the heterosexual transmission of AIDS, the first ever reported. Uh, Until that point, AIDS had been a gay disease and a disease of needle users um, or people that had intimate relationships with gay people. Um, It was not a heterosexually transmitted phenomenon until that day. And that day, uh, a good friend of mine who's a mathematician read the paper, came over to my house and said, I've been doing some calculations based on the, feet, the the stories in the paper today, and you're in the wrong business at the wrong time. you got to get out. <laughs> you're in the wrong business at the wrong time. And by that time, my wife, who initially, when I first became involved with the business, she thought it was something very cute that her husband did. Ten years later, she didn't think it was so cute anymore. We had two kids now. She th- wished it was something that her husband was done doing. So yeah. she jumped all over this and saying, yeah, you can't uh, uh, and I didn't trust her opinion because she had a, she had a horse in the race. I didn't want to quit. You know, I was very proud of my work. And uh, I thought sex movies were so bad <laughs> that I grew up watching. Just not the, the – they were amateur, amateur night on the technical level. But they were even worse on the attitudes. They were so mean-spirited. They were so male-dominated. I actually like women. I don't spank them on the first date. Um but that was not what porn was. Porn that was misogyny. is fantastic. I don't spank him on the first date. No, porn was really nasty, and it, it was abusive. And I, I thought we, he said broad-mindedly, the children of the sexual revolution of the 60s can do better than this. Because they, here's you have naked people willing to fuck, and they make it, they fuck it up. Don't fuck it up. Just let them fuck. And there were like two different scenes at that point. There was the New York scene was very gritty, and you really saw this kind of sex I'm describing a lot in New York. But the San Francisco scene, which all emerged because L.A. couldn't shoot down there, they came up here to shoot, was a bunch of hippies, and it was all free love and sunlight. And you come, I gotta come. run we the hippies come. off the property, is what Ross Long always says. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, that was my point of view, and I was pushing it. And um, so I, I was anxious to change the industry towards that. And actually, there was a lot of progress made in that direction till AIDS came. And then everything went backwards. Yeah. So I, I directed that movie for Seika, and she's a smart woman because uh, I had no experience other than every now and then Sam would have me direct a scene within his movie. Um, 
But Seika went ahead and hired Alex Dorenzi, which is a name you know, yes? Yes. Yeah. He hired Al- she hired Alex as, my, as the cameraman. Alex Dorenzi never worked for anybody. <laughs> One time God offered him a part in the Garden of Eden, and, God, and she, Dorenzi told God, no, I don't work for anybody. <laughs> but <laughs> when Seika awesome. offered him this job, he actually needed the money, so he took the job. And, um, okay, now i got Alex Dorenzi as my cameraman. I've worked for Alex. He's a good guy, and he makes beautiful films. He was one of the best because he, he, wasn't, he, wasn't, he wasn't taking anybody else's money. He made them on his yes. own. Yes. And if the scene wasn't any good, he didn't have to use it. Uh, other people were stuck having to make do with what they got. He didn't. He had a, he had a special kind of cottage industry. He ran out of his, um, I just want to say, hacienda. He had more than a house. He had a whole kind of ranch in Marin. Um, oh. Okay, so that turns into first day of the of the of the film, first scene. Um, Dorenzi calls action. What? I felt like I just got slapped across the face. This is my movie. I'm the fucking director. Son of a bitch. Okay. Well, <laughs> Son I realize of a at bitch. This point, I realize at this point, I mean, I'm wor- we're awesome. working in front of 50, 60 people, and um, I want to fire him like right now. Um, but if I fire him, not only is he the cameraman, it's his camera. <laughs> so right. we don't have a camera and we don't have a cameraman. No and camera, I'm here no to help cameraman. Make you make got lots movie. of problems. All right. So I just swallow my pride and get through the morning. Then at lunchtime, I take Alex in the back room and I say, look, I know who you are and you know who I am, but I'm the director here and you got to let me direct this thing. He said, oh. Okay, well, you direct. He wasn't even thinking of it because he automatically just took over. I mean, how he's an actor. How he's an, he knows how he's an actor. He hired me to work for him. But that wasn't this movie. And, and to his credit, after that, he actually became my cameraman. And he did a fabulous job and never stepped on my toes again. And we made a wonderful movie. In fact, there's one scene, I was working with Don Hart, who's a good actor, and um, he wasn't quite getting what I wanted out of that scene. And I... Sam used to make you go 20 times, and most producers didn't like that because they'd be pulling out their hair at the money being spent because um, Sam was a perfectionist. But I, I, and I needed Don to get this right. It was the key thing in the movie. So I took maybe 10 takes of it. But by the end of it, he got it. And Dorenzi took me aside, and he said to me, you know, you really improved that scene. And that was the highlight of my directing career. That's awesome. Pre- you know, play, you know. Props from the master. That's fantastic. That is amazing. We have got a great guest with us today. He joins us live here uh, on our big broadcast. You know him from his entire legendary porn career. Howie Gordon is with us today. He is he is so famous. He is known in, in all four <laughs> corners of the world. I'm uh, the ghost of Rich Pacheco. He is, he is amazing. Uh, Howie Gordon... I'm amazed this exists. HowieGordon.Bandcamp.com If you want to go over there and say hello to uh, Howie. Um, he joins us here on our big program. So what is what is next for you? Now, now, now that you're doing all these uh, audio books and all this amazing stuff, what, what, what do you have going on out there, baby? Well, my agenda at this point is to promote the books as much as I can, okay. and that is to get on any, everybody's podcast. And thank you for having me. You need, you need to, I don't, you know, I, I have would, no budget. There's no budget in my. I would book, love so to see to, you chat with my buddy Frank Catolo. I have been trying to put that together you. for a myriad of months. I think you guys would be fantastic together. But but go I ahead. I love it. Friend. I love it. I love it. And my overall end game at this point is to see the movie made of hindsight. Or I have a second book I wrote called Return to Scroll Hill. Um, that's got nothing to do with <laughs> Return porn. Return to Scroll Hill. Yeah, Scroll Hill is a neighborhood in Pittsburgh, and it's kind of reached a scandalous um, reputation at this point in time because Squirrel, the, in Scroll Hill, uh, two years ago, was where a shooter broke into a synagogue. Uh, Squirrel Hill is a primarily oh, Jewish neighborhood and killed. Uh, it was the biggest mass killing of Jews in in yeah. America ever. Yeah. 
Um, so if this book isn't about that, the people here Squirrel Hill, <laughs> this book their mind about goes that. to that. Squirrel Hill happens to be the neighborhood I grew up in. So I, what happened was my mom had a heart attack, and I got called back to Pittsburgh to help take care of her. And I kept a diary during my trip there. And this book has three arcs to it. One is the arc of helping the family help my mom. The second arc is I'm back in my hometown, so I'm going through my growing up memories. Um, and they're, they're fun. And the third arc was I had a best friend back in the 60s named Harold. And Harold was a brilliant, creative mind um, who, when we hit our early 20s, blossomed into manic depression, schizophrenia, which I didn't know anything about at that time. I didn't have didn't, – back in the 60s, all the shrinks were alcoholics, and we were all taking acid. Uh, there was nobody to talk to about what I was going on trying to deal with his difficulties. Um, and I tried to save him, and sadly I couldn't. Um, and I tell that story as well. Uh, it's a homage to him and uh, growing up, uh, a growing up story about we do what we can, but <laughs> sometimes the magic works and sometimes it doesn't. So it's a, it's a powerful story. Um, and those two books are both also available in audio in audiobooks. And I would like to see a movie made of either one, and I would like to be intimately involved with that movie from script to performance. Um, I, you know, um, you, you're familiar with John Leslie, right? Yes, yes. Well, I want to um, make a movie about hindsight because my, my career, John Leslie and I were like Mutt and Jeff um, in maybe 10, 12 films together for Sam Weston. Yeah. So uh, we'd have to portray those. And I would cast my son as me, and I would cast Sebastian Maniscalco. Do you know who he is? No, I do not. He's a relatively new comedian who caught fire about a year ago, Sebastian Maniscalco. But you, you'll see him. You'll see why. He's had Manis HBO specials. Oh. He's, this guy's on the, he's on the mainstream stage already. Uh, he, I don't know him. He doesn't know me. But he looks like John Leslie. And he looks – John Leslie was nothing if not Italian. Motherfucker Italian. <laughs> That's who he was. And this guy is too. And they, 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 you, I keep seeing, every time I look at this Sebastian guy, I see John, who, of course, is no longer with us. That's so I would love to have him play that part. Um, and for the Anthony Spinelli part, um, Anthony, his real name was Sam Weston. Yes. And he was Jack, Jack Weston's younger brother. You remember Jack Weston, the yes, character indeed. actor? Yes, indeed. And Sam looked just like him. Uh, anyway, he has uh, a son. Mitchell uh, Spinelli, he calls himself, and he's been in the porn world. I would have him play Sam because he could play it in his sleep. That's his dad. So. Play it in his sleep. And that starts me on the path of making that movie. Now I, now I need funding, which I'll tell you a story about. Back in my during my career, there was a fellow named Michael Campus, a producer in Hollywood. He did one feature film called The Education of Sonny Carson. It was about a black guy. And it was uh, racially relevant and uh, liberal bent. And um, he had some success in the mid-60s releasing that. So somehow he got aware of me uh, and a guy like me in porn, which was different than your typical male stars. Uh, and he wanted to talk to me. And he brought my wife and me down to L.A. because he wanted to do our story. And he called the okay. treatment the rainbow route because the here we are route. like – the sunshine and the flowers and the hippie and it all feels good and nobody's beating anybody up and it's it's not it's not um, scummy, you know. I, I have a pet grieve with all the porn about anybody who spells the word cum c u m. No, <laughs> no, no. We're not going there. C o m e is good enough for me. Thank you. And anyway, so it's a movie about people about that point of view, uh, the more enlightened view of sexuality that doesn't involve all the dirt. Um, the dirt. And so like dirt he takes us to he t <laughs> he takes us to a fancy French restaurant, wonderful. And he's he's selling me. He's selling me on him. Uh, he doesn't have to sell me. It's good, fine. Let's go. Let's make the movie. So he gets us all jacked up, sky high. And then after lunch, I go over to Anthony Spinelli's house. Sam, he's my friend, so I, and I tell him because he's excited for me. I'm being discovered by Hollywood. Um, and I said, and he said, all we need is funding. So Sam goes, oh, 
All you need is funding. Hey, he yells his wife. Hey, Ross, all they need is funding. And he's running around the living room yelling, hey, all they need is funding. <laughs> and he's just making fun of me. And I get it. I get it. I get these guys, it. I get these guys, it. These guys like Michael uh, Campus, what they do is they collect 10 ideas. And then they take it to the money people. And they just present them all. And if they pick one, they, they got a winner. So it's not like my movie is so special. It was just winner, like winner, the, chicken dinner kind of deal. Yeah, one of the current crop of what he was trying to turn himself into a, a, a job for himself. Well, this Didn't has happen. been this has been fantastic. Uh, we definitely have to do this again. I am going to see if I can get the legendary Frank Catolo to join us next time because I think that would be amazing. Uh, Howie, before we let you go, where is the best spot to send people to, uh, is it the band camp site? What, 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 what is that for the audio copy of, um, the, the audio, the copy of what we call performance audio. That's the hot one I'd like to sell right now. If they want to read it, they go to www.hindsightbook.com. Look at that. www dot hindsight com if you want to uh right. as 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 they say get in on the deal uh and the other one the yes. other one return to squirrel hill is www dot return to squirrel hill dot com and uh, that simple you can't go wrong with any of it i'm, I'm actually a good writer and uh, i love it <laughs> i'm actually a good writer <laughs> that's amazing <laughs> I'm 74 years old. The time for modesty is over. I don't have much time left. <laughs> well, you are fantastic. I'm looking forward to doing this again. Um, we are, I guess, going to be going to the AVN in January uh, when they hold this thing in Vegas. Uh, my return to Las Vegas, as they say, and um, it it it'll 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 be uh, it, it'll it'll I'll be busier than a fruit merchant, basically, is is what's well, be good. going That's on good. out there. Let me leave you with a, a, a story about me and John. Yes, Leslie. yes. Think, Go ahead, my friend. I would love. When I first that. met That's John, we'll Leslie, wrap things up. Uh, before I got in the business, I used to go to the X-rated drive-in movie in Pittsburgh, <laughs> and my wife and I would be in the back seat, and up on the screen at the Blue Dell Drive-in, there's John Leslie and Joey Silvera on the screen, and we're fucking in the back seat. Okay, great. Right, right. A year later, I'm now in the business, and I'm on the set one day, and in walks John Leslie and Joey Silvera. Wow! Movie stars! I want to know them! I want them to like me. I want to be their friend. I go running up to them like a puppy. I, da, 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 da. And John and, and Joey also was very Italian. And they look at me going, hey, hey, Joey, come here. Look at this one. Hey. And they're talking about me like I'm not even there. And I'm thinking, wow, these guys are really assholes. Because they're mean. They're just, just they, they, and I finally realized, okay, they don't mean anything good for me. And I, I, I get out of the way. Yes. All right. Yes. So eventually I meet Sam Weston, and Sam says to me, um, I want to make a movie with you two. I want to put you together. You'll be great together. And I said, oh, no, no, no. John is great with Joey. I don't want any part of John. He's no. He said, oh, you're, you're dead wrong. John's a good guy. You know, I don't know why they're giving you the business, but, you know, you'll like him. Okay. So we meet. We end up making a movie. Talk Dirty to Me. Talk Dirty to Me makes him a superstar, and it makes me a star. Um, first time out of the gate, we had magic together. And by the end of the movie, I went from not liking the man at all to realizing I actually loved him. There was, I, I saw, he's, he's things you don't expect. Like he's a chef. He's an artist, a watercolorist. He's a brilliant harp player. I mean, there's so much depth to the man. I had no idea was there. So we're all alone at the end of this movie. In a, packing up to go home, we're in one of our rooms, a hotel room, and I'm I'm real surprised. And I turn to him and go, you know, John, I really love you. And he said, "What?" I said, "I really love you." He said, "You want to fuck me?" I said, "No, I don't want to fuck you." He said, "Well, then calm the fuck down." <laughs> That's awesome. That's well, like, that okay. that is that is where we're going to leave it today. Howie Gordon is our guest, and uh, Howie, thanks for doing this, brother. I look forward to uh, chatting with you soon. Thanks for uh, thanks for taking the time, and uh, I always appreciate your 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 conversation. Thank you, sir.
A pleasure. You bring out the beast in me, Woodrow. Have <laughs> yourself a wonderful day. Thank you, Howie. There he Bye -bye. goes, the fantastic Howie Gordon. And that wraps it up here from this edition of Tick.